Uh, and you're welcome back. This afternoon, we're talking about the National Cathedral because a Northern Member of Parliament, uh, Samuel Okujetua Blakwa, is questioning trustees of the National Cathedral on why some 790,000 Ghana cities was expended on organizing two public events, leaving only a paltry 4,000 Ghana cities in the coffers for actual construction of that building. The minority MP for years now has been leading the charge in demand for accountability on how the state funds are being disbursed for the project. At the start of this week, trustees responded to the MP insisting that the National Cathedral has a transparent financial plan. There's more in the following report. Skiven service was organized to climax a three-day Bible reading marathon which took place from the 28th to 29th of December 2022. In his report on the status of the cathedral, the executive director of the National Cathedral Secretariat, Dr. Paul Opokumensa, revealed that government has so far paid a total of 339 million Ghana cities towards the construction of the project. The total amount paid by the government of Ghana to the National Cathedral Project is 339 uh, million cities. The total, this total is made up of the following. One, amount paid directly to the National Cathedral Secretariat is 225 million. And the amount paid directly to the consultants, AJ Associates, the design team, is 113-040-546-7. Uh, so it's literally 113, 114 million. The two payments total, 339-003-06486. So first, there is and there are no missing funds that could not be accounted for. Dr. Paulo Pukumensa also registered the Board of Trustees' disgust at what he describes as misinterpretation of facts surrounding the project by some members of parliament. While a project of this nature will always have its discontents, we are nonetheless concerned about the misrepresentations, particularly when it comes from members of parliament. For instance, the continuous misrepresentation of the contract to the consultants is worrying, as none of the amounts bandied around comes anywhere near the contract amount. Rather than 34%, that was said, we said we had paid the architect 34%, actually the contract figure is 12.5%. President Danado also reiterated his conviction for building the National Cathedral while making a fresh donation of 100,000 Ghana cities to aid the continuation of the work. Since gaining our freedom and independence from the British colonial power on 6th March 1957, Ghana has so far been spared civil war, famine and epidemics. We are certainly no better than the other nations in our neighborhood who have been confronted with these challenges. But I believe that it is by the grace of God that we have been prepared, preserved, and sustained. And I end by making a donation of 100,000 CDs to the project. And hope that the Metropolitan Archbishop is satisfied about the concentrated nature <laughs> of my presentation. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Reverend Opoku Oina, is admonishing critics to seek further information about the project or simply keep quiet. People are encouraged to actually contribute. So um, I think those people who do not understand it, what I do when I don't understand something is to keep quiet, then investigate, try to find out what is going on, before I speak on the issue. Now, many people are talking who do not actually understand the project. And I will advise such people to keep quiet. And we have a very good culture in Ghana that is respecting one another. We will ask such people to keep quiet, not to speak against things, or especially to abuse even some, sometimes the elders of the land. I mean, that goes against the ethics and the culture, the various culture of Ghanaians. The three days long scripture reading came to an end with a visit to the Cathedral Foundation by the President to have a first hand view of work done so far. The National Cathedral Secretariat is urging the general public to freely send their little donations to aid the completion of the project by the end of 2024. James Kwesi Veggie's report read to you. 
Well, so that's how events turned out uh, earlier this week. But um, for today, not all member of parliament, Samuel Kujito Blanco, uh, is um, bringing up a fresh conversation. The MP on his Facebook wall posted what he believes could be a reason for which contractors have left site. Let's bring you excerpts of uh, that uh, comment on his Facebook wall. You have that uh, starting off with a point that after we successfully blocked the 80 million Ghana cities budgetary allocation uh, for President Akufado's Cathedral in Parliament, I have observed a spirited campaign by the National Cathedral Secretariat uh, who, uh, I mean, to woo private donors and uh, assure the donor community that it can still meet its ambitious 2024 completion target. The Secretariat's track record gives gives me very little confidence in that regard. This is a secretariat that raised the equivalent of 794,990.01 Ghana cities from its fundraising in the United States of America, and then decided to host two Bible Museum of Africa symposia at Kempinski in Accra, which cost them Guess what? 790,845.27. Uh, in simpler terms, the Secretariat's Kempinski expenditure is virtually everything raised from the US fundraiser, leaving only a uh, mostly, uh, that's uh, 4,000. 144.74 Ghana cities for actual construction of the project. Any wonder uh, the JV contractors and then uh, Rebard Limited have long abandoned the site since March 2022 for lack of payment? That's the question Samuel Okujetu uh, Ablako is asking. Fortunately, he's joining us via Zoom uh, here on The Pulse. Thank you so much, Honorable, for your time. Uh, Happy New Year, first of all. Uh, you're starting off uh, the year with a lot of controversies and many questions for you to answer as well. Um, Reverend Opoko Ina says, you need to keep quiet if you don't understand what's going on. We'll deal with that shortly. But uh, how do we, first of all, trust the source of what you've put out there? Happy New Year, Suga, and Happy New Year to all the distinguished viewers of uh, the polls. I would like to, first of all, respond to the direct statements from the report that you carried uh, before this interview uh, from the Marathon Bible reading. First of all, the president says that uh, we have been spared conflict, civil war, uh, unlike our neighbor. I just thought that for the record, uh, President should be told that Ivory Coast, just next door, President Hufei Buani built a cathedral, the biggest cathedral in Africa, and one of the biggest in the world. It didn't stop Ivory Coast from degenerating into civil war. Many years after that cathedral was built in Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast, as we all know, have had civil war. They've had a terrible, horrible conflict that claimed hundreds of lives. So if cathedrals uh, will prevent conflict or civil war, uh, Ivory Coast you know, tells us that that really cannot be insurance. Secondly, I listened to Reverend Opoku Nina in your interview. Uh, I, I respect the man of God very much. He's one of the revered uh, clergy we have in our country. When he says that people should keep quiet, with all due respect, we are doing our work. That is why we are elected to parliament. My constitutional mandate is to speak out in parliament. You know, really, the parliament, that's what it means. Parliament, the French word. You know, we go there to speak, to debate. We don't go there to keep quiet. And when you are carrying out your constitutional mandate, you see clear breaches. You have to speak out. It's my constitutional mandate. It's an obligation to the Ghanaian people and to those who elected me. Actually, hmm, I'll be derelict. And as a Christian, I will let Christianity down. And I'll be disappointing the Almighty if I see clear wrongdoing, clear constitutional breaches. And I do not speak up. There are many, many scriptural verses that urges Christians to speak out, to stand out and be counted, and not, as it were, to join the bandwagon or when they see wrongdoing, they, they shut up and allow that wrongdoing to, to continue. So I, I respect him, but I respectfully disagree with his caution that people should keep quiet. This is a democracy. 
Nobody is going to keep quiet. Members of parliament are going to do their work. And you see, all the issues, I was the first hmm, to make public releases from the consolidated fund signed by Kenofriata for this National Cathedral. How come the Board of Trustees, how come the National Cathedral Secretary never told Ghanaians until I started serial, serializing documents? Do you think that as a member of parliament, I will have done this country good service if I stumbled on that information? I am in the house. We have not approved an expenditure, and we know what the Constitution of Ghana says about the executive not having the right to dip its hands in the consolidated fund, to carry out any expenditure out of public funds without parliamentary approval, and I keep quiet. What would that make me? I will be aiding and abetting, I'll be an accessory of that grand corruption that was taking place. So every single information which we have put out on this National Cathedral has checked out. When I said that 25 million has been released, it checked out. When I said 142 million CDs has been released, it checked out. It was accurate. When I said that 32 million CDs has been paid to the, the architect, nobody knew that. I put out that information for the first time. It checked out. When I said that there have been other releases, fortunately, at the vote of Central Committee, Ken Furiata reluctantly, remember that when he appeared, he said, oh, he doesn't remember how much. We insisted that he should go back to his office and let us have the detailed breakdown. He wrote to us subsequently, and it emerged that 339 million Ghana cities, can you imagine? No member of parliament, not even MPP MPs, knew about these withdrawals. And the Supreme Court had been told in the James Cobb Melbourne case, you can go for that, that report, the, that, 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 that judgment, pardon me. The, Filings of the state, the case of the state was that they are not going to burden the Ghanaian taxpayer. They are not going to, as it were, touch taxpayers' funds. They are only providing land. That is what they told the Supreme Court. The Attorney General's case is submitted, and that only the, the land will be provided. That's the contribution of the state. And then the churches. In fact, if your viewers are to Google now, you see a lot of prominent men of God, including Duncan Williams, who I respect very much, who was misled to believing that they are not going to use taxpayers' funds. And Duncan Williams said on record, the Reverend Duncan Williams said that they are not touching public funds. The government is only providing land. So this is what we were told. Remember that originally, the president even told us that, look, this is a personal pledge to God. There will be absolutely no contribution from the state, uh, and we are going to rally Christians to build it. So the shifting positions, the deception. I have written to the Public Procurement Authority under a right information request. The Public Procurement Authority has responded that this whole National Cathedral contracting did not come before them. It didn't respect the procurement laws of our country. And you say that as members of parliament, when we see these things, we shouldn't talk about it. As we speak, even the cost until a few weeks ago when they appeared before us, the cost keeps escalating. Remember this project started at $100 million according to the finance minister. Then it moved to 150, it moved to 200, it moved to 250. Is this how we, we conduct a national project? As we speak now, it's hovering around $400 million. Only God knows where it's headed to next. Mm. That contribution of the state that we are being told <laughs> will be the role of, 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 of the taxpayer. We are not told exactly in what terms it is. Meanwhile, this is a project which has been adopted by the National Cathedral Secretariat and the Board of Trustees. And if you look at the methodology that they have pursued, it has been the most reckless even wealthy nations would not have adopted this methodology. They will have gone to a green field, land unencumbered, so that they will construct this even after a national discourse, after it's been agreed that there should be this construction. As we speak, this project started as a personal pledge. There hasn't been a national discussion 
Parliament hasn't debated whether we need a cathedral now, whether it's a priority now. Don't forget that in June of last year, people make it look as if it's only I or my colleagues in Parliament who have criticized this project. In June last year, the Catholic Bishop Conference issued a statement saying that this project cannot be a priority. The Catholics, the Christian Council, also last year, June last year, issued a statement saying that government must come clean, that they are not happy with the lack of transparency, the lack of accountability. These are facts. So I come back to the methodology. A, a nation that is struggling, that cannot pay NAPCO workers, cannot pay school feeding caterers. You can't buy textbooks. You can't, you can't, you say you don't have money to solve our problems with portable water, with, 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 with bad roads. Now, you adopt this approach where you demolish judges' bungalows. You demolish the passport office. You demolish the scholarship secretariat. You demolish Thompson's, the IT firm. You demolish uh, Waterstone Reality a luxury apartment complex. They are in court now demanding judgment debt of 120 million Ghana cities because you haven't been able to compensate them. You demolish the Judicial Training Institute. I mean, so insane. How can you adopt this, this, this model, this approach? Now you have the Chief Justice going around looking for $50 million to construct a new Judicial Training Institute. He's looking for a loan, which will become a burden on the taxpayer. So you see, this is the most reckless. This National Cathedral Project has become a symbol, an iconic symbol of lack of planning, lack of prioritization, deception, fraud, corruption, underhand dealings, total lack of respect for the Ghanaian people whose taxes you have siphoned on their blind side, on the blind side of their representative. Mm. Okay. And you say that we shouldn't talk about this. I want us now to get the yes information. Yes, and, and, and that's where and that's where yes. I'm, I'm going to. Uh, my question to you earlier was about the source and why Ghanaians should take you seriously uh, when you claim that just on two public events, over seven hundred thousand Ghana cities was, was expended. Uh, how how are you able to prove that as we speak, um, only four thousand cities is, is left off from, from that fundraiser? So my source is, you can see uh, the documentation here, quite a fat documentation uh, that we have here. Mm -hmm. When we in parliament demanded uh, full accounting from the National Cathedral Secretariat, they gave us uh, this documentation. So my source is their own documentation which they submitted to us. And in the from, from the Secretariat have, itself. What you're saying yes, is you're, you're relying on documents the from, from the Secretariat itself. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Documents submitted to us in Parliament mm. from the Secretariat itself. And you have here uh, US fundraising. They informed Parliament that they raised 794,990.01 Ghana cities, mm. the equivalent. And you come to item number five, they then tell us that they decided to host two major Bible Museum of Africa symposiums or symposia at Kempinski. And uh, when you do the tally, they say accommodation, conference hall and banquet for the Kempinski uh, symposia came to 509,263. Travel expenses for invited guests, 157,346. Printing and station, 50,035. Performance from a group at the National Cathedral, 8,500. Honorarium, 6,500. Running cost of official vehicle, uh, you have uh, 4,850. Health and safety, 400 cities. Media and publication, uh, they, they have you mentioned here, media and publication. I don't know if you got your share. Uh, 9,400. <laughs> then sundry expenses, 44,310. Courage, 240. When you put all of that together, you get 790,845.27. And I'm saying that uh, for a project that is struggling for funds, the contractors, Rebade Limited, have abandoned sites. I put out the letter they, they, they issued to their workers on the 14th of March, 2022, that government is not releasing funds. Government 
uh, has not been forthcoming with resources. So they can't continue with the project. You see the, the project site is now grown with, uh, with weeds. Um, they, the, 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 the metals are rusting. They've been out of that site for about 10 months now. Uh, they, they, they haven't returned to site. One would have thought that if you go and raise funds, 794,000 from the United States, you've assured donors that you are going to put the funds into the project. At least, you should not be pursuing such needless. I mean, what you say you want to construct a cathedral. What is this symposia? How does this help the, the construction of the cathedral? Why are you using funds that are intended for the construction? fiscal construction of this project. Why are you using it to hold symposia? Two symposia. We comes at the whole a colossal 790,000, virtually the same amount. So if you really do the arithmetic, only about 4,100 Ghana cities was left for actual construction that, that will go into, into the project. Mm. That is why I say that looking at the track record of the National Cathedral Secretariat, I really wonder if uh, donors will get value for money if uh, if they continue on this trajectory, uh, and even when they want to choose venues, they choose the most expensive location in Ghana. Um, I, I would have thought that all of these you know great churches we have in Ghana that have beautiful auditoriums, they could have even had since this is a church related symposia, they could have had it there. They didn't choose any of these of these churches, which has their leaders, their founders on the on the board of trustees, and they went to they they, they opted for Kempinski and paid full commercial price. So I, I, I mean, I, I look at the whole conduct, the the, the, the whole rationale, and the approach that this uh, National Cathedral Secretariat is adopting, and I really have my doubt that the ambitious target mm. of completing this project next year, 2024, will be met. And, and th this question has faced you uh, very often, the question about the future of this project. Uh, we don't know what the outcome of the 2024 elections will be. You're confident that your party will win the next elections. What's going to be th the future of the National Cathedral and, uh, say, let's take, for example, an NDC administration? And that's why Many have asked, to what end are you doing this advocacy? So let me be clear. Hmm. I have not had a discussion with the uh, presumptive flag bearer of the NDC, and um, uh, our manifesto is not ready. Uh, and so it's not clear now what the position will be. But I've had opportunity to respond to this in my personal capacity before. And what I said at the time is that uh, I, if, I'm, if, I, if my views are sought within my party, I will say that let us put the question to the Ghanaian people and let the Ghanaian people decide. I think that, look, this is a project that it is being said now that it's moved from the president's personal play to God to a national project. So let's ask the Ghanaian people, do they want it? Or do they think we should use the site? Already mm. buildings have been demolished. Do they think we should use the site for something else? For example, we don't have an infectious disease center. You know, COVID has exposed us. Do you want to do something like that? Or, or, or some public health university? Or, or, or do you want to, do, 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 do you think that there's, there's something more of a priority to the people? Let the people decide. So I would say that let us go back to the people, especially now that it has transitioned after we caught them siphoning funds on the blind side of parliament and now they were forced to do the writing they put it in the budget 80 million which successfully we fought uh, and i must commend colleagues for that brave fight we will now have to let the ghanaian people decide mm. uh, Samuel really to a black white, uh, my, my position yeah but, but you are a ghanaian as well as a citizen what's your position you see, I, 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 I do not want to offer my personal position now because that, that will distract and it will, uh, and it will uh, make me appear as though I'm not a team player. I, I will want a party position. Let's have a discussion within the NDC. 
and then also let's let's bring in the Ghanaian people. Okay, I, I was talking I, about. Okay, I, I yes. I am doing this in the spirit of transparency, the spirit of accountability. I don't want people to even say that. Oh, okay, all along is because he probably doesn't want the lost temple built, you know, and that's why he's been doing this. I, I don't want a distraction. So I would rather that we take a collective decision as a party. And uh, as, as I've told you, my personal recommendation to my party elders will be, let's put it to the Ghanaian people and mm -hmm. let the Ghanaian people decide. Who knows? I will join you. You can decide to be the conduit to do a poll. I've been following your polls. Uh, they're very scientific. Very, You have a very you know, uh, a, a good viewership, large uh, viewership, and uh, your, your, your people, have, your listeners and viewers are very discerning. Okay. It, it would be good to, 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 for example, let Joy lead the process and, and, and conduct a poll or some independent CSO, credible organization, and let the Ghanaian people give us feedback. Because here we are, look, people say 339 million, that's what government says. But in actual fact, we have spent billions Billions. If you if you add the demolitions that are taking place, if you if you begin to factor in the rent that we had to pay for the judges in dollars, and then we are constructing new buildings for the judges, don't forget that. If you factor in scholarship secretariat relocation, passport office relocation, as ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, I know we spent 10 million Ghana cities looking for a place for the passport office. If you add the fact that Thompson's had to be relocated, the IT firm, Waterstone Realty is demanding 120 million in judgment debt. Look, it's running to billions, billions of Ghana cities. Mm. What has been spent so far? Okay, it's then. It's not I, 339 million. I, I was saying so, the... so much, so much, mm. so much money, you know, mm. a poor can no wonder look, all the literature. Have you read the Financial Times report, the New York Times report? All of them, they're making mockery of Ghana. Poor country, you are insolvent, you can't pay your debt, and this is how you are conducting yourself. Okay, then. You think I... that you can go and pray in a cathedral and that will solve your economic woes? You know, we've become the butt of all jokes in the international arena. I was, I, I, I was indicating earlier. Embarrassed. Yeah, I was indicating earlier that, that there's a lot of questions facing you. Uh, Sir David Ajay has, for the very first time, spoken exclusively to Joy News on what he thinks about the project. You've put out uh, some concerns on some amount of money uh, that has been paid him. I, I want you to take your thoughts on what he has said, but first of all, listen to him make the point about having a healthy discussion on the National Cathedral project. It's so important that the diaspora are part of the development of the continent. Um, I think that we have to make opportunities, the government has to make opportunities to allow for um, people from the diaspora to feel very comfortable to come and invest their money back, on, back at home. And, you know, I just think that times like this, this festival is a really fantastic moment where the diaspora can hear from people that are here, but also mix with each other. You know, half the problem is that we don't see each other, we don't meet each other. So making situations where we can meet each other, network, exchange ideas and talk about opportunities is a big part of what we do. What, what do you make of assertions out there that um, the environment is not conducive enough? We know you have designed very notable, you know, buildings in the US. You've done a lot, even in the UK, moved to Ghana. Like you mentioned, employing one 20 people in your you know Africa office now you designed the National Cathedral you've seen the opposition that is you know uh, uh, against it what, what do you make of all of that so I, I just think that there is nothing wrong with healthy debate <laughs> it's great everybody should have an opinion and talk about how they feel about everything and things should be allowed to be investigated and checked so everybody feels comfortable there is nothing hidden or nothing opaque Everything is going through the systems that can be checked through the government. So that is wonderful. In terms of making the environment sort of so that people can have businesses here, this is incredibly important. Incredibly important. It's incredibly important to have healthy debates. It's incredibly important to have healthy discussions and interrogate things. What is really sad and boring is when people just make accusations based on anything that is not actually investigated. So fake investigations are just really reflect badly on the people who are investigating. So that's my opinion. You think people are making baseless accusations? I think that the, all the information is in the public realm and actually people are ignoring to look at the information. And they're saying things that are counter to what is actually out there. 
in the public realm. Mm. But, but finally, before you go, um, mm. what, what, what do you make uh, of calls for the project to be discontinued? Okay. I because can't talk about this. This is not what I'm here for. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, so you've heard, you've heard him. He believes that a lot of information that some of you are putting out there is not accurate. Uh, what's your response to what, what he said? What, hello? Yes, I, I'm, just, I'm hello? just asking yeah. about your, your response. What, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, so um, clearly he doesn't respond to the specifics. Uh, we have very specific allegations. First of all, the amount of money that has been released for it, it breaches even the Ministry of Works and Housing's own policy. The government itself has said that out of the 339 million Ghana cities released, 130 million was paid to him. Do the math. What's the percentage of that? I had a uh, uh, Dr. Boko Mensah say that uh, members of parliament are not being factual, which is not 34%, it's 12%. 113 million, almost 114 million, you let me be generous, 113 million out of 339 million cannot be 12%. And everybody in the sector knows that you cannot dole out such huge sums to architects, to consultants, you know, way in excess of 30%. You, you must follow the same percentage. If it's a 12% or a 10% contract, then it should be 10% along the way. You don't, they, they, you, you, I've never seen this. this, this great imbalance where the project is being starved of funds, the contractors have abandoned site, the government is not releasing funds to them, they don't have money, and yet, as for the consultants, they are being fed fat. It's always a percentage of what is being released to the contractor. So how is it? I mean, we've all been in government before. We supervise government projects. I, I, I supervise e-blocks. You know, this never happened. This, this, this is so bizarre. All right. Where a contractor is struggling for funds. Then remember, we have also raised procurement issues. The procurement law was put aside. It was flagrantly violated. That's a fact. Then don't forget that they, they, they claim that he was being contracted uh, because of an emergency. That is, that is the, the procurement vehicle they use. What emergency? We have raised that. He doesn't respond to that specific issue. We have also said that at the time he was given the contract, he was not licensed to practice in Ghana. It's a fact. The Minister of Works and Housing, the Honorable Asensu Bwachi, himself inducted him months after they had awarded the contract to Sir David Ajay. So we have raised substantive issues that he needs to speak to. This generalization and, you know, saying it's a healthy debate and uh, the people are conducting fake investigations. No, he should show some respect to the institution of parliament and mm. some respect to the Ghanaian people who are paying him. It's right. people's sweat, people's toil, people's taxes. Mm. You know how hard it is now in this collapsed economy. If people's taxes are being used to pay you, you must show them some respect. So we have raised substantive issues. He should respond to those specific issues. So far, he hasn't done that. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we've run out of time. Uh, there were some other issues that would have dealt with, but uh, we'll do that sometime when, of course, we have you in studio. I'm grateful for your time here on The Pulse. Uh, that's uh, Samuel Okujitua, Black on North, Thong, Member of Parliament. Well, this